Good morning, I'm Frank Powers, and this is Lifestyle Tucson, the program where I speak to our neighbors, the people behind the scenes of our amazing organization, small businesses, and nonprofits. Our friends are informing you how they serve our community, and they are here to give you updates on future projects. Let's make some new friends today. What if I told you I had a great idea? A million dollar idea. A surefire can't miss, sure thing for sure that's gonna win. It's an idea for an organization. Let me tell you about it real quick. It's a nonprofit of engaged philanthropists dedicated to building the capacity, strength, and impact of nonprofits addressing social problems. A community where everyone thrives by connecting and investing in our community to enhance social impact. Interested? Of course you are, it's a great idea, how could you not be? It's the billion dollar idea that fuels million dollar ideas and it's not something I need to sell you because it's already a dream come true with SVP Tucson. SVP stands for Social Venture Partners, an organization that bridges the gap between philanthropists and nonprofits, driving relationships and resources between these areas, ultimately building resilience in nonprofits and the Tucson community. Their main event coming up, it's no elevator pitch, it's fast pitch. This Thursday, the 25th, and today, I'm fortunate enough to speak with Bree Seward, Director of Strategic Relationships for SVP Tucson. How are you doing, Bree? Good. Thanks for having us. And we're also joined by Brittany Battle, SVP's Fast Pitch Director. Brittany, welcome to Lifestyle Tucson. Hi, Frank. Hi, Tucson. Did you get this job because your name's Battle? Because, I mean, they're ready to put up a fight here. If I did, it's because they know I'm a soldier ready to fight for the community. (laughs) (laughs) So I've given a little bit of hype about Fast Pitch, but first let's talk about SVP Tucson, Social Venture Partners. Give us a little bit of history about SVP Tucson. Sure. Well, uh, Social Venture Partners Tucson um, is an affiliate out of a global network of social venture partners. And it all started um, back in 1994. Um, Paul Brainerd, he had sold his um, company to Adobe, and he was early retirement at 47 years old. And wanted to give back to his community and um, got connected with colleagues, friends, associates, and started the first Social Venture Partners out in Seattle. So we are one of the affiliates, Social Venture Partners Tucson, and we work with 145 um, dedicated partners who are making investments and um, helping the, build uh, the strength and capacity in nonprofits. It's fantastic. That's, I love hearing that it's a big network. It was how many? We have 40 yeah. affiliates oh, across the world. Nine In nine countries, nine countries. 40 affiliates. Yeah. So it's a really big global network. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that gigantic. Yeah. That's very impressive. So what does SVP Tucson do throughout the year? So throughout the year, we work with our partners, um, with our nonprofit organizations. Um, we have a two-generation collaboration that we um, work with our partners in making investments um, and building the capacity of nonprofits. So we work with five currently, um, and then capacity building projects. And right now we're introducing um, Families Coming Together events that we've offered in November and February, where we're bringing families together out in the community and providing them much needed resources that they need to help the whole family thrive. Um, And so those organizations are Job Path, Make Way for Books, Girl Scouts of Southern Arizona, and Interfaith Community Services. So our partners work shoulder to shoulder with these nonprofits to help um, build and increase the capacity in the work that is much needed in their areas to ultimately serve more individuals in in Tucson. It's an organization that helps organizations build organizations, which is really important because networking, to me, is the thing that really leads to all success, no matter where you live. And I always talk about how Tucson's the baby bear's porridge when it comes to networking. It's just right. There's a lot of people in town that are doing a lot of great stuff. And there's a lot of great organizations that are helping these people do great stuff. So that said, how does one get involved? How do you become a partner, a corporate partner or a volunteer? I know that that's how you guys actually operate. And being a partner is how you help. Right. And so we are we have over 145 partners and I'm amazed by them um, because not only do they lend, they they, they invest in um, the, the Social Venture Partners Tucson with annual giving, but they're also working shoulder to shoulder with nonprofits and building capacity. So if you have experience in running a company, 
and you want to donate your time um, and resources to helping the nonprofit community in the ways that they need. So whether that's tr- strategic planning, marketing, development, um, financing, um, investments, coaching, you can coach. mentorship sometimes is a really exactly. rich experience. You, yeah, you can get involved and um, learn about those needs at those core nonprofits that we work with, that we're partners with, um, and then be involved in those different committees, um, in those activities that they need to better support and drive them forward. We do a lot of listening. You know, we break it down into that simple fact that we're deeply concerned and also excited to be a part of this community because we know the critical issues that that our community is facing right now. And we are connected to a lot of the the people who want to be part of the solution, you know, Mm -hmm. bringing our community together around what is it that we need today and where are the support systems that we can provide to bring everyone together, bring families together, bring nonprofit communities together, bring people who care together to just simply learn more and activate their their um, their expertise and plug it into a place that that they're passionate about. I know a lot of people are looking for that. I have a lot of people that sit around kind of play video games a lot. Where are you? I know. <laughs> and they go, I really wish I could do something. They always deal with this cliche of should I join the Peace Corps? Everyone thinks that that's what you got to do and make this big change in your entire life to make a change for others. And that's not true. Because volunteering is a big part of things, and it's the theme of this show, because I always talk about how volunteering changed my life, and it changes the lives of people. And don't try and make your friends do the things that you want to do. Make friends with the people doing the things that you want to do. That could not have been said better, and I love that you're reinforcing that with your listeners, because you don't have to transform overnight. You don't have to go in and fund it all. You don't have to be the one rolling up your sleeves alone. There are friends and and support figures and people who have experience and people who are just simply on a path of wanting to learn. And so just find whatever it is you like to do. And I guarantee you there's a community waiting for you, yeah. whatever that is. And the key word is community. Mm-hmm. Like we've said that several times already. And we're going to say it a lot of times because community is what Tucson is all about, and it's what organizations like this are all about. Strengthening community, having growth, and making people a lot more aware of what's actually going on around town. Because a lot of people don't really know. I always say you should really take care of your street and not worry about the nation. A lot of people really think that they could be president. Well, why don't you be president of the neighborhood board? Why don't you get started picking up litter around the corner? And start thinking about that because you can affect change locally. And that's what organizations like yours is really doing by helping these people that help others a lot. You named a lot of great organizations. I love Make Way for Books. I love these partnerships that you have that people don't know about. So shining a light on the people doing that are how we're going to pull everything out of the dark. Because some people really think that things are bleak these days. It's hard, right? A lot of that negativity rises up to the, the headlines. But we got to let people know that it's the cream that rises to the top. Mm-hmm. And that's what's going on here is we got a lot of great organizations. I was just quoting the Macho Man, by the way. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's what we got going on here. And we have a lot of people that are rising to the occasion because let's jump in and talk about the main event since I'm talking about the Macho Man. Uh, let's talk about the main event. And that is Fast Pitch. That is your big thing, the big main events coming up this Thursday, and this is when eight great organizations are going to go head-to-head doing their, what is essentially an elevator pitch, probably a little longer, and talking about their organizations and why their organizations deserve your attention and deserve all the cash that comes with the prize when you win Fast Pitch. So tell me about Fast Pitch. It's more than one event. It's a five-month course. What is the path from Fast Pitch to the main event. Fast Pitch is an annual training program for nonprofit organizations, and we uniquely designed this training program. We wanted to help nonprofits increase their fundraising and messaging skills. And so throughout the course of our free training program, which is five months long, they learn the art of storytelling. They learn the importance of donor connections and relationship building at the heart of it. And they learn the power of a good marketing strategy. 
that centerpiece of this training program is what we call the Fast Pitch Main Event. And this is a community event. This is for everyone to come together in support of organizations that are on the front lines of social change and to be inspired, to stir their soul, and to awaken their awareness of what is happening in our community. And they can not only come to our event in person and experience what I call the magic of this this community coming together event, but they can also join virtually all around the world. And the world does tune in. You know, mm-hmm. that affiliate, uh, you know, affiliate network that we're a part of that we were talking about earlier is going to be plugged in watching, learning about Southern Arizona. What is happening here? And how are the people that live here and care so much about it, what are they doing about it? So come to this event to see eight organizations you know, pitch and have this showcase of what they've learned and and their story. But also, you can make donations. You can be part of our TEP Audience Choice Award um, and vote on your favorite winner who was going to get a a package, really, of a $10,000 check from TEP, a Biz Tucson featured article. We love Biz Tucson. And KXCI Impact Announcements. And so the audience chooses that winner. So you can come, you can be part of it, you can help select that winner. And then I always tell everybody, the, my favorite part of the night is that the community, they, they give. It's a giving night. Mm-hmm. You, you are filled and activated by the, the stories that you hear. And the community, they donate directly to the causes they care about in real time. Um, and drum roll. I don't know if you can insert this in, Frank, but you know what? If you could, drum roll for who are... MC is this year. Do oh, you know yet? No. You, ah, I get to tell him. I get to tell the world. Let me do this. I'm so excited. Our MC is a former fast pitch participant, class of 2016, Paloma Lopez Santiago. And she is going to shine on that stage, having been on that stage many years ago as a participant. And so we couldn't be more excited to share this full circle impact of how being on this global stage can help build the confidence you need to then someday, you know, be supporting our community at a higher level and in the capacity to now uh, kick off our show, kick well, that, off our show. That's so impressive because one of my questions later, and uh, maybe keep it in mind, um, I was going to ask a success story. What's more successful than taking a course, winning it? Did she, did she was she a winner? Or was she oh, just, oh, so she, she won that thing up. and now she's hosting it, which is incredible. That is a success story and a half. That's what you want to hear. And that's what this is producing. you got to love it. So let me just point this out. If you're a person out there that is one of these sort of uh, angel investors or someone who cares about their community and has a little bit of money, right, and understands how that works, we've got a place for you to give and to help out more than just your average big things that you hear about in the nation. You can help locally and really change lives, and that's what's important. A lot of people donate to big, big organizations that get billions of dollars worth of orga- worth of money donated to them. You can use that money locally and change the streets here, change the city, change the people involved in your city that are going to help spur this on with other organizations, other partnerships, and other people in town. That's what we're all about. We're just trying to meet Tucsonans and talk about how they're changing the world that we live in here in Tucson. And again, what better timing for this event? Time Magazine knows how great Tucson is, right? So now the global stage is going to tune in on Thursday and see what Tucson has to offer as far as smart ideas, new ideas, and people and entrepreneurs in town really trying to make a change here for the people they care about. Let's meet some of our contestants because you've got eight great organizations that are going to be joining us. And I know I'm familiar with a few of them. And then some of them I'm going to be meeting for the very first time. You explained how judging works a little bit. So there's an audience award, but the main event is won by judging, right? How many judges do you have? So we have a hundred and $21,000 on stage in awards, and those are sponsored awards. Mm-hmm. And so um, we have 11 awards. And so sponsors will choose the winner of their award. Um, that really? Night. They will. They will. We, they get to choose their, their community, you know, their team, uh, whatever business it is that selected that award, gets to decide the winner that night. And they will. And you'll get to see that. Um, but we do have some awards that are selected in, in 
uh, a different way. And so our judges award is selected by a panel of judges. Mm -hmm. You'll get to see that night. These are community leaders. Um, and they'll, that's a $10,000 award. And then we have our audience choice award as well. So our audience, our global audience will select that winner as well. So. That's so impressive. So there is actually, it doesn't sound like it's going to be one winner. This sounds like oh, a thing where there's a lot of winners, there's a lot of winners, which means everybody's going to win. In a way. Everyone wins in a way because we do talk a lot about the financial impact that Fast Pitch makes, and I don't want to shy away from how important it is to give funding to nonprofits, especially because they're shouldering so much, and they're on such of the front lines of the work in our community. They need that funding, so an unrestricted funding, right? But really what's happening in this Fast Pitch program and in this community event is that relationships are being formed, uh, you know, new funding opportunities, like you mentioned earlier, new volunteer opportunities. And so the impact that expands out from this is like a ripple effect that just goes on and on into you know, eternity because we continue to hear that someone was hired for another job here or they got, you know, they got this funding that allowed them to hire X many more people. And it continues to you know, mentorships that changed lives. And so um, all of this sort of wraps around in support to these nonprofits to figure it out what is it that you're doing, why, and how can we help? I love it. There's some key words I'm even writing down as I'm listening because social change is a big word. Mentorships. Mentors changed my life. A mentor is something that you might want to find out. And again, organizations that offer this sort of treatment – it's very important, all right? Mr. Miyagi helped the karate kid, all right? You need that help. <laughs> and the thing that this organization really has is hope. You're really just pitching hope. Mm -hmm. All of these things are going to lead to really great opportunities for everyone. And that's all I hear as you talk about it. So now let's actually go through some of these companies. If you're tuning in right now, you're listening to Lifestyle Tucson, and we're talking about Fast Pitch, the competition coming up this Thursday. And there's a lot on the line for a lot of great organizations in town, and we're going to meet some of them right now. And I guess we'll just go in, uh, why don't we go in reverse alphabetical order? Because I don't want to play favorites. So tell me a little bit about uh, one of the organizations, the Southern Arizona Legal Aid Incorporated. I love what Frank is doing here, and I must just point this out if you, if I may. He's asking me to pitch these organizations, which is so beautiful. The, the side effect of you know, directing this program is that I am learning all along the way with these nonprofits. I'm learning how to pitch, how to tell stories. And so I hope they're listening today because they're going to get to hear me pitch uh, their organization and see um, this, again, full impact of how we learn about these organizations and how we continue to love the work that they do and show our support. So legal, uh, Southern Arizona Legal Aid, wow. They are providing free legal services and support to those who need it. And they're regaining money for clients that need it. And so they're providing an unparalleled support to our organizations by helping them in their time of need, in their legal time of need, and coming in and doing it in a way that provides them dignity and respect. I love it. And that's going to be Jamie Ibrahim with Southern Arizona Legal Aid Incorporated. Next up, Sarsef. Tell me what Amber Folkman's gonna be talking about. Sarsef knows how important it is to create our future critical thinkers and help them become problem solvers, science lovers, and engineers. And so they are in support of youth who wanna get involved in, in the field of learning, growing, science, engineering, uh, the, the mystery and wonder of life. For science. I love it. I'm going to be talking to Sarsef in just a couple of weeks. So make sure you tune in to Lifestyle Tucson and check that out. Uh, going on, Mobile Meals of Southern Arizona. Luke Smith will be here. What's he going to be talking about at Fast Pitch? They provide meals to those who need it, but they provide companionship. They care so deeply about the people that they provide two meals a day to, to give them nutrition, but to give them friendship and something to look forward to every day. Next up is LPKNC. Heaven Rendon's going to be speaking. What a beautiful name. Tell me a little bit about them. They provide support to youth that is critical right now. Mental health support, substance abuse, prevention, awareness, services for youth right now. And they're a great organization. 
Just Communities Arizona, Carolyn Isaacs will be joining us. Just Communities is creating safer communities. They are helping create and provide support around organizations that are building a community where everyone can thrive in a safe way. Impact of Southern Arizona. Diane Charbonneau is going to be there. What's she speaking of? Impact is a full wrap around organization. They provide clothing. They have a clothing bank, a food bank. They really meet people where they are and they say, what do you need? And we're here to support you with it. Amazing. Educational Enrichment Foundation, Tremaine Ravenel. If you know Tucson, chances are you know who TUSD is, our largest school district. Maybe you even went to TUSD. EEF, Educational Enrichment Foundation, provides support to students in TUSD. Extracurricular support, shoes, clothing, experiences. Great organization. And last but certainly not least, and one of my favorites, because I know these people, it's the Community Investment Corporation. Jeanette Gonzalez, I'm so excited. Tell me about CIC. This organization is pitching on the BIPOC Loan Fund, which was founded by the employees of CIC, funded initially by the employees of CIC, and it's specifically designed to help BIPOC entrepreneurs get zero interest loans and just keep helping our community and support BIPOC entrepreneurs. Eight great organizations you heard about. Do you care about helping kids? Do you care about feeding people? Do you care about getting loans for people that have been left in in the lurch by banks and by credit unions that aren't able to help people of certain demographics? Are you trying to help science? If you're interested in any of these, and I know I'm interested in all of these, you really have to check out Fast Pitch this Thursday. Tell me where it's at and how much is it? I know entry to the live event is $75, I believe. We can join virtually around the world for $25. But where are we headed? So it's at the beautiful U of A Health Science Innovation Building. It starts at 5 o'clock, and there's an amazing network reception early on. Um, And so tickets are $75, but you can watch and view and donate and support in your living room for a virtual ticket for $25. Absolutely. Where does any of that money go? Like, does the money from that you collect for these tickets and things just go back into the organization, back into things? Yeah. yeah. So it does support uh, the nonprofit organizations, um, and we collect donations that evening that go back to the nonprofits. Yep. So everything that um, is supported in the night really is designed to support these nonprofits through the training program that we provide, through the alumni support that we provide annually. So we continue to to bring in this whole idea of building social capital so that those that have been part of Fast Pitch can continue to connect with one another and continue to be part of it. The money supports, and people want to know, so the money does support um, the the program, the participants, and we collected that night. So it was in there. (laughs) So that's great because, again, it shows you that even just paying the admission is helping. You're helping by just attending. That money's not just going to nothing. It's going to help everything. And it all gets re-rolled into helping nonprofits and helping other organizations keep growing in town. It's not just a cover. So make sure that you check that out. Tune in on Zoom. Can people see the event after it's aired? Absolutely. And this is how I I know that you are in your your purpose, in your work, because you're asking this question. So, yes, um, Everyone will be able to watch it on our YouTube, on our our website. But what's really special is we're starting to air this on television. So we're trying to get people to find it wherever they are. And there is still a huge audience of television viewers, believe Mm -hmm. it or not, my radio friends listening right now. (laughs) But they, you know, so we're we're starting to expand that. Um, Our friends over at Fox 11 and My18 are helping us uh, share that event a couple times. Um, And so we'll continue to do that and build relationships with our media partners and hope to have that um, rebroadcast more and more over the years on different stations and in different ways. And It's exciting. Great question. No, it's exciting because it really, seeing that gives, again, hope. It inspires me. It inspires us. So I, I am involved in this. I love all of this. I, I myself got to do a pitch competition back in the day. And again, if anyone doesn't understand what we're talking about still, it's just Shark Tank. You've all seen Shark Tank. It's the idea of your idea, pitching it to people that you have to convince to believe in you, and then they're going to help you get that project off the ground. And I was able to win a pitch competition. Here's my tip. Here's my cheat code. I was going to give it just to Jeanette, but let's be fair. Give it to everybody. Come on. 
be memorable. Be memorable. I have seen people win competitions just because they all dressed the same and looked professional. So at the end of the event, people remembered that group. I know that I stood out because I tend to stand out in a crowd and I went above and beyond. People remembered my thing. That's what I was told even later. Try to be memorable. Dress up. Go all out. And if you can do something maybe even a little over the top, if you're the first pitch, they'll remember you eight pitches later. So think about that. Think of how you can actually stand out because you might have the most life-saving medicine on earth, but if you don't pitch it correctly, uh, someone with a fancy shoehorn is going to beat you. So you got to think about that. It is a quite a bit about being memorable. So make sure you make a memory for all these people that showed up to help. They're there to help. They want to help. Make sure that they are there to help you. So that, and again, it's, it's easy for me to even say that because it sounds like there's going to be a lot of winners. You know, that's the trick of this. This isn't one winner. This is going to be a lot of people. So some people are going to appeal to the fact that they love science. Others care about homelessness. Others care about children. You're going to have a lot of winners that night. And if you want to help someone win, make sure you tune in or just get on down there and attend because it just sounds like it's going to be a heck of an event. So we've only got a couple minutes left, literally. And I just want to say, where can people find more about SVP Tucson online and on social media? Yes, I invite listeners to visit svptucson.org, where we have all of the Fast Pitch program information online, and then a little bit more about what we can do and how you can partner with us. Love it. Thank you so much. Because this was, again, I was so excited. I think you can hear my excitement about all this. It was really great talking, because if you're not moved by what we just spoke about, I don't know what's going to move you. This is a group of people trying to organize and help out other groups of people that are going to help out hundreds and hundreds of groups of people. That adds up. That's the dominoes falling the right way. So let's help out Tucson and let's help out all these great entrepreneurs with their ideas and all this stuff. And let's do it fast this Thursday at Fast Pitch. So today we made friends with Brittany Battle, SVP's Fast Pitch Director, as well as Bree Seward, Director of Strategic Relationships for SVP Tucson. Changing the lives of people in Tucson by helping these organizations that change lives. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Let's do it again. I will. I can't wait. I can't wait. This was Lifestyle Tucson. Bing bong bing. Not much time for a recap today. Just make sure you check out SVP Tucson. They're doing a lot of great stuff. Check them out online and let them know that you check them out. And watch that fast pitch competition. It's going to be available even after it's done if you can't go. But it's going to be really interesting to find out some of the new entrepreneurs and the new big winners for some of these great organizations in town that are doing a lot for Tucson. So I want to thank our new friends at SVP Tucson for joining me today. You've been listening to Lifestyle Tucson. For more information about our program or to listen to something you may have missed, go to the Sunday Mornings page at klpx.com, kfma.com, mixfm.com, or espntucson.com. You can also subscribe on iTunes and wherever fine podcasts are pitched. I'm your BFF Frank Powers, Toot Toot Tucson. I love you the most. <laughs>